Evil's Comics. This guy right here is Evil Mike, or Mike if you prefer. And this is going to be my review on Batman, Catwoman, the Gotham War finale. This is my part four video. We're going to cover the last two issues in the series. Uh, but before we get started, please like, comment, subscribe on this guy's channel. It all helps. I'm trying to hit 1K. That's the goal. Um, hit that notification bell. You never know when I'm going to be dropping videos. It'll keep you in tune. Um, so we're going to touch base with Red Hood issue number two and the Batman Gotham, you know, Gotham War. Honestly, this one is kind of a filler, um, like filler explainer issue, but um, a lot of um, information that, that's in this book. Um, I, another note is all the books, you know, information on both these books, the information will be down below in the description if you're interested. Uh, so let's get started. So this one's going to cover a lot of ground. It says Gotham City um, a week ago, and it's basically um, these, you know, it's, it's touching base with the last issue and how um, Red Hood was training these two guys, Butch and this other guy uh, being this guy right here. Um, and Butch eventually getting killed by the Scarecrow, you know, it made it look like Red Hood had killed him, and that's the current rumor that's going around, that's what this guy's asking me, he's like, nah, Red Hood didn't kill him, but a Scarecrow did. They eventually go back to their car, you know, completing their, their thievery stuff that they're doing for Catwoman, <laughs> and they are greeted that none other than the Joker himself, and he basically spends this tale that, that He's heard that, that Red Hood isn't interested in the Joker anymore, and he's focused on the Scarecrow, you know, because the Scarecrow killed that dude. Um, so basically, Joker wants to give, you know, Red Hood a message, and it's, you know, just his name on, on a little piece of paper with a bunch of addresses on the back, you know, basically a map leading to the Joker. Um, the book jumps over, and it, it's at the same moment, just across town, and Red Hood is beating up a whole bunch like basically 30 dudes in a bar um, trying to find information about where Scarecrow is um, and, and nobody in the bar knows anything eventually Catwoman has to step in and you know she she's telling Jason why she brought him into the fold kind of thing and, and one one of the reasons being to fuck over Batman because he you know he's bat, kind of Batman's like like um I don't know, his his love interest almost with Jason Todd, you know, the one thing that he failed at that he's trying to fix kind of thing. Um, but basically, you know, Catwoman also tells him that she believes in him kind of thing and it ultimately tells him that, you know, one of his guys that he trained needs to give him a message in person kind of thing. Um, so he ends up going to the meetup to meet this guy that has the message that Joker gave him and we have this conversation between you know him and Ravenger and the guy never ends up showing up um, they, he, well he is there but just not alive and they find him dead and Scarecrow has um, intervened and end up killing this guy that has the Joker message they do find the message um, Ravenger thinks it's funny kind of thing um, this whole interaction is hilarious but <clears throat> basically you know at this point Red Hood, you know, grabs the note, goes after Joker, you know, um, he's still interested in the Scarecrow kind of thing, um, and sends Ravenger to, you know, um, like, wait for him until he, you know, he, she's supposed to give the information to, about the Joker to Manhunter, um, that's currently, you know, hunting the Joker down in his book, The, the Joker Who Stopped Laughing, The Man Who Stopped Laughing, um, he's going to track down Scarecrow and that's where they leave off you know um, she's supposed to be waiting for Red Hood to come back eventually they, they show in the book and this is where the book kind of fills in the gaps they show the scene where Batman kidnaps Red Hood and gives him the syringe alters him you know um, they show Ravenger waiting a bunch of this it, like I said is, is filling so if you've been watching the you know or you watch the reviews or you're reading this a lot of this will make sense. So we have the moment where um, um, Ravenger gets tired of waiting. She can't call Catwoman and she eventually calls Marquis um, during this time to re be revealed to be Scandal Savage's daughter. Um, but she's looking for you know Red Hood and thus revealing to Vandal and um, Savage and Catwoman that Red Hood's missing. 
Uh, we get this hilarious scene over here where Joker is waiting for Jason Todd to show up, and of course he's not showing up because uh, kidnapped by Batman. Um, and they basically inform the Joker that that you know Jason's not showing up because of what Batman did. And at this point, Joker takes it upon himself to save Jason Todd. He's like, "No, I need him," kind of thing. Um, so we have the scene with the current villains that are tied with, you know, Vandal Savage and, um, and basically being greeted by the, you know, the Joker and stuff like that. Um, we get the scene over here where it's the scene where Jason runs into the burning building to go save the kid. And we find out that the reason he got trapped in that thing was none other than, well, the beginning part of it was Scarecrow. Scarecrow goes in there to you know, kill, kill Jason because he's, he's pretty mad that Batman has, you know, used his fear toxin to, you know, scare the hell out of Jason and now, you know, he's broken kind of thing, so he's basically going to mercy kill him. Um, <clears throat> as this is going on, we got our dude Joker shows up and he's like, no, 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 you're not going to kill Jason, you know, and I'm here to save him kind of thing. And they get into this crazy ass fight. Um, during the fight, Scarecrow ends up, you know, stabbing Joker with his fear toxin, claiming that this Joker isn't the real one, and since he's not the real Joker, you know, the fear toxin will work, and lo and behold, it doesn't work. Jo this Joker's not scared of anything, kind of thing. Um, and he turns it back on, you know, he pulls this little gun out and he sprays Crane in the face, um, supposedly with Joker, Joker toxin, but we learn later on it's, it's mixed with Solomon Grundy and, and, um, some Joker talks and the Scarecrow ends up running off or whatever. Joker does end up saving Jason to a degree, but that's when this thing falls down and that's, you know, where we saw Batman and Catwoman intervene to come save him. And that's where this issue leaves off. Next up we got Batman, uh, Catwoman, Gotham War, Scorched uh, Earth. Um, and this is the finale to the whole crossover event kind of thing. Um, So we start out, and it's um, Vandal, and you know, and at this point they're trying to get all the the fragments together, and basically sending out all of Catwoman's thieves. Now that he, you know, has turned them into this league of of thieves, or you know, his own version of League of Shadows kind of thing. Um, so they're out there, supposed to be stealing the fragments, and the, the book shows us that. <laughs> we get the scene where Jay, you know, um, Tim Drake. Um, you know, kind of finds this new, you know, this other league of what, you know, evil or I don't know what they're called, but basically, I mean, we got some explanation on why they look like this and stuff. It's because Vandal basically allowed them in the Batcave, um, and they're, they're rocking Batman's gear. You see Batman, you know, Black Mask and Batman's gear, the ventriloquist literally wearing, you know, some old Batman gear and stuff, but during this entanglement, they managed to you know, grab hold of Tim Drake, just overcome him and kidnap him. Um, so we jump over to where we left off with Batman and Catwoman and Jason Todd, and, and now Catwoman knowing the whole truth about what's going on with Jason after saving him in the fire. Um, again, Batman's all stressing this, okay, we need to stop this at the moment and, and you know, focus on, on Vandal, you know, he's... He's got these meteors, you know, we, we, Batman doesn't exactly know what he wants with the meteors, but he knows that, that giving all these thieves and all these bad guys immortality is not a good thing. Um, you know, there's a lot of, like, back and forth, you know, moments with the, you know, Jason Todd, you know, being mad, man, you, you effed up for doing this, and, and of course Catwoman, and no, 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 no. So basically Batman's like, look, we need to set this aside and move out and do what we need to do. Um, he kind of reaches out and, you know, finally, Catwoman gives Batman the, his, like, uh, link to Oracle back, because at this point he has been cut off by, you know, Dick Grayson and the Bat Box, but basically, you know, him calling to arms all the Bat family to go after, you know, and, and basically stop all the thieves from, from stealing, you know, the meteorites, and that's what, Catwoman sets out to do. She starts tracking down, you know, some of the thieves that she knows, and most of them haven't, they're, they're doing their own thing. They're not even working for, um, you know, Vandal Savage and stuff. 
So we got Batman, and he's mentioned that there was a major reason why Vandal Savage wanted to break, well, wanted to purchase Wayne Manor and get into the Batcave, and it's because Batman unknowingly, or knowingly at this point, had a, a meteorite, uh, or a piece of a meteorite, but he believed it only to be tied to um, Ray Shabu, and he was studying it for, you know, Lazarus Pit reasons and stuff like that. And now knowing that Vandal Savage and Ray Shabu were tied to the same meteor kind of thing. So basically Batman doing what he does best, and we see some traces of Zerog, you know, Zerar in the background. Um, but he's tracking Vandal Savage at this point, trying to learn his location, and he pretty much without his, you know, all his tech, he does manage to find out that, that you know, he used a van to move the meteorite and the whole rogues gallery, you know, to this observatory. And that's where Batman heads off to. So we jump over to, you know, uh, Tim Drake and his, you know, problem and the, you know, being kidnapped by this version of the rogues gallery kind of thing. And that's where the Bat family is sent out to and save them. And they basically do. They, they end up stopping most of the the um, rogues gallery, mostly part due to um, Tim Drake, but we'll get there in a second. Um, so, Calman does eventually find one of the thieves that has found one of the meteorites. She doesn't reveal that she is there. She kind of rides on the top of his car, knowing that this dude's going to take it back to Van of Savage. And sure enough, he does to an observatory, which Batman already happens to be at. You know, kind of making the joke that she's late, kind of thing. Um, Bat, we find out that Batman's been there for a good minute, and he has been like observing Vandal and, and everybody, and trying to figure out why they're at this observatory, and specifically using the telescope. And then we find out why um, the the meteorites they they have this like parasitic quality inside the stone, and basically they're sending out a homing beacon. And the, the, he doesn't want these little meteorites. He's trying to call a big meteorite to crash down onto Earth, and um, so he can, you know, use that meteorite and um, get his powers back, his immortality thing. Um, so now that we know the whole plot, and you know, Batman and Catwoman, she jumps, and they they jump down there to just stop and save the day. The book's gonna jump back and forth between this war with the villains, and um, you know, Vandal and his crew. Um, ultimately, like I mentioned, they, they rescue Tim Drake. Once they rescue Tim Drake, Tim Drake uses all of his knowledge um, from studying, you know, all the various, you know, rogues gallery stuff that's in the bad stuff, and he, he variously goes through and stops like a, a banged up version of Professor Pig, which I thought was dope. Um, eventually, you know, stopping Firefly from using Mr. Freeze's 2.0 guns, you know. Um, figuring out, you know, a, a, a really easy way to, to stop Scarecrow. He just basically held his breath and knocked him the fuck out. Um, we go back over to the Vandal Savage fight, and Batman just trying to convince everybody that if this meteorite slams into this location in Gotham, that not only will it kill Gotham, but it'll take out most of the eastern, you know, m m most of the eastern seaboard kind of thing. Um, now, full-on warning, this is where the book's going to get crazy, and there's some, like, crazy stuff that's going to happen. Okay, so, at this point, there's no stopping the meteor. They, uh, you know, everybody, they, they've taken out the rogues gallery, so they're not worried about that at this point. Batman has no failsafe. The Justice League members are not answering. Superman's not answering. Um, and they have to stop this meteor from crashing into Gotham, where it's going to kill a lot of people. Um, so Jason Todd does the unthinkable. He notices that the bat plane is there in the brownstone, um, and this dude hops in the in the bat plane, taking off to stop the meteor, which he does um, stop the meteor to some degree, uh, with Batman trying to stop him, like screaming out, like Jason, no. Um, but Jason Todd does smash the bat plane into the meteor as it's breaking orbit, but it didn't stop the meteor completely. It does shatter into a whole bunch of pieces, and sure enough, a massive meteor does slam into the the observatory near where Vandal and Batman and all of them are. Um, so we got Scandal and Va Vandal next to the 
uh, meteorite, and of course Vandal does some tripped out shit, and he ends up stabbing his daughter so he can be the first one to touch it, ensuring that he gets the immortality. He ends up touching it, and it doesn't have the same effect that it did all those years before, and we get this image here. I'm not going to claim to know what happened, but at this point, Vandal Savage just disappears. Um, it's, it, it, it's unknown if Vandal Savage is dead at this point. Um, so around, after he touches this thing, it starts crumbling into the earth and making this massive crater-sized hole. They all start falling into it. Carolman goes to save Marquise, who she play, who she claims that's who she knows and had the alliance with regardless of the Vandal Savage Scandal connection. Um, she does end up saving Scandal, but in the long run she, you know, the, like an earthquake goes off and she ends up falling into the pit with Batman unable to save her and she, it looks like, you know, she just falls into the Lazarus pit maybe to her death. Um, and that's kind of where, you know, the, this this moment leaves us on, and everybody like, you know, kind of take a Batman side. You know, Tim Drake's like, you know, I got you, Batman, come on. Um, so it, it jumps two weeks later, and there's a couple things we have, you know, basically this conversation with Bruce and Dick, and um, you know, Bruce claiming that, you know he's sorry for bringing them into this war that he you know got everybody into they were good soldiers dick claiming they're not soldiers they all agreed on to this but bruce ultimately claiming that he's got to get out of this and allow them the ability to stop if they want to stop because there's no happiness that comes from this kind of thing dick trying to you know tell him that there is some happiness out there you just have to look for it. like him and barbara are happy kind of thing and bruce just you know not not wanting you know that he eventually hops into his car and takes off claiming that you know Nightwing will be the the new heir of the next generation but to give those new generation the option now but basically Batman's going back to his one off one man army style thing we got this scene over here with Batman um, tracking down the Riddler and basically getting another clue we get this monumental scene where you know, Riddler thanks Batman for helping him, you know, bring back his henchmen kind of thing, but he wants his help on something else. Um, Joker is back in town and has been causing the Riddler problems and gives Batman a clue um, to Joker. And in the clue, it's mentioned, you know, Batman's tired of all these Riddlers, especially after what's going on, you know, these riddles and especially after what's going on. But the riddle is, um, the Joker, he's causing me all kinds of grief, so I have a riddle for you. I'm a cat scratch of a number, what am I? Um, the Roman numeral for three would be the answer, and, and Batman just mentions, Are, I, I'm already aware of three Jokers, and they give a notation to Justice League 50. Uh, recently, we just got that miniseries, The Three Jokers, which was dope. I highly suggest you go um, check it out. But basically after that, smashing that receiver that Riddler was talking to him, Batman saying that he will figure out Riddler's location and send him back to Arkham, you know, it, after he's dealing with what he needs to deal with. Um, <clears throat> as he's like, you know, heading out of the building where he met Riddler, he sees somebody in the distance, and I'm trying to find, it's, it's real small, but uh, it makes it look like Catwoman is up there, and he you know, jumps up there to find out, cow, find Catwoman. Um, when he gets up there, we get this scene, right? And I'm not too confident on what's going on here, but I'm just going to say that somewhere on the loop, that the roof she left at, and it just says in case of emergencies, um, assuring us that Catwoman is still out there kind of thing. Um, but we get this epilogue over here with this dude that has been in the Jason Todd series. It's the dude that Jason Todd trained with Butch. I'm drawing a, a blank at his name. But he's breaking into somewhere, right? And it's some fancy looking place. And we get this last scene right here. And he's like, holy shit. And he's like, and all it says is, Bruce Wayne is Batman. And that's where this series leaves us off with. Um, so... I loved it. I thought it was great. There's so much to unpack in this in this short little crossover event we got right here. 
um, a couple deaths, right? Maybe permadeath, you know, no permadeaths in comic, but a couple deaths, right? Vandal Savage, maybe Jason Todd, Catwoman, you know, maybe it looked like she was still alive, but, um, you know, that, that, that's a shit toad for, I mean, uh, Jason Todd, like, God dang, you know, and, and the way he, his death, it didn't, I mean, and I didn't mention this, but, you know, Batman did mention that the autopilot, you know, was disabled in that, that version of the Batwing, so there was no way for, you know, Jason Todd to, you know, that, yeah, I don't know, but comics don't write something, right, can't be dead, it can't be dead, not Jason Todd. Um, but Vandal Savage too, I'm, you know, I'm kind of like, I know he didn't die, and there is mention that that crater eventually formed a new version of a Lazarus Pit, but that it's unconfirmed on what it does, or what it is, or even if it's anything like that, because when Vandal touched that meteor, he said it was something di some different kind of magic, or something different, you know. Um, but overall, I, I really like this event. For me, it didn't stop anything, it kept main con continuity going. Um, cause I'm reading Batman and Catwoman anyways. So, um, and just having to pick up the Red Hood, which I end up loving because they, they're bringing back the Joker. That was a nice, you know, getting Joker to come back to Batman, which has been revealed that is the next big thing that's coming in Batman, which I'm super excited for. Um, but guys, let me know what you thought about this whole event. You know, overall, um, the story and everything, it, it was great. It was like one, you know, okay, well, this is what the event is about. No, 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 look, this is what it's about. No, 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 this is what, I, I, I kind of liked all that. and kept me going all when, um, especially the Batman issues, man. The, the, the chip writing was fantastic. But I, I like Tina's writing as well. But guys, that's my review. Please comment, hit that like button, you know, subscribe if you're not already, already subscribed. But please comment below. I want to hear your thoughts on this event. Um, but guys, that's all I got for you. Bah.